We're not sure what to call this video at this time, but it is December 16th, about 3 p.m., 1500 hours. I've got two more hours of daylight, and I've gone through these two bottom colonies here, and I've got this one here I want to do, and then I would like to do another one here, if I could have enough time you don't want to be doing this in the evening because if it gets dark outside I won't draw the bees to my windows and then if I turn on my light all it's going to do is draw the bees up to the light so you want to use the daylight I want them to go towards this window the few bees that do come out but majority of them stay on the frames okay this is what I do I take off the cover I don't normally talk to them because it gives off carbon dioxide. But see, I let them realize it's just me. I stick my fingers down in the cluster. Let them relax a little bit. Okay, I've already got the cover sitting there. And then I'm going to take this shim off and try to get all the bees off if you can. See, there's a bee right there. They're just so cute. I try to keep them in the cluster. And that's going to go over here. This is cane sugar. I decide which frames I'm going to pull out. I try to choose the easiest frame to pull out. By using, I'm an electrician, I have a lot of screwdrivers. I like a hive tool and a screwdriver. And I will pry on both sides of this frame with one end of the screwdriver and then the other end of the hive tool. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pause the camera. The purpose for this visit. I'm checking for a queen and I want to see if she's laying. I'm assuming they've stopped laying. And what I've done is I've been pulling out the pollen patty. Pollen patty does not make a queen lay. It has to be warm enough, there has to be enough sunshine and pollen patty for the queen to lay. If either one of those is missing, the queen will not lay. If I have pollen patty in a hive and it's not warm enough and there's no sunshine it's cold the queen will stop laying so the purpose for the visit is to check to see if the queen's laying if she's not laying i'm going to remove the pollen padding i'm also checking for the amount of honey and the reason why i set this cover over here this bottom board i want a good place to set my frames so that i can look at them to assess to see how much honey they have and then i'm going to remove another one This one here basically has nothing on it. So that one's always going to go over here. That's the end. You always want to keep your honey towards the center of the hive during the winter. This one's got pollen on it. And honey. This is a great frame. I like this one. So it's going to go back where it was. And then when I get to the point where I've got cane sugar in the way... I just pick it up and I move it. Anytime a bee gets on your hand, make sure you don't kill it. Just let it walk back into the cluster. People that have aggressive bees, it may not necessarily be the honey bees that, that are determining they're aggressive or not. It's, it depends on how a beekeeper takes care of their bees and how they inspect the hives. If you make it a bad experience for your bees when you're in that hive, of course they're going to be aggressive and they're going to remember. So the next time you open the hive, they're going to be aggressive to you right at the beginning of the inspection. This one basically is a little bit of this, a little bit of that, a little bit of pollen, a little bit of syrup or honey here and there. So I'll, I'll go ahead and leave that in the middle. In about six weeks, I'm going to introduce pollen again and I'm hoping 
that they will be ready to start laying. The queen will start laying again. This colony here is small enough. I'm gonna start. I'm gonna have to add bees. And what I do is I bring in a lot of colonies, a lot of hives, and there are usually a few holes here and there where bees come out and they'll go to the window. And then I also want to mention if they end up on the floor and they're dead, you got to remember bees come out of the hive and they think they're out of the hive, it's time to die. And that's what this is right here. So gather them all up, even though they look like they're dead, gather them up and then I bring them inside in the house. In here it's about 50, but the floor is probably close to 40 something. I'm not heating the floor right now because it's warm enough. The bees put off enough heat, so the floor is probably colder than the room. So these bees were all dead, or appeared to be dead. I stuck them in a jar and I brought them inside my house for about 15 minutes. And I can see they're still, they're still alive. So I could put them in any colony I choose. So I kind of like uh, not allowing them to die. They go out of the hive thinking it's time for them to die, and you gather them up. And you make it warm again and put them into a cluster of bees. I don't have to set this one on the floor. It's got bees on it. So I try not to set any frames that have bees on it on the floor. I put it back in in the deep. Okay, I'm getting close to the cluster now. And I've got pollen there. We'll see which way that pollen's going to go. So it wants to stick to that other frame so I could take and I could fold this over you don't want to disturb them too much get them agitated so see how I just moved that over now I can pull this frame over and I have my LED flashlight LED is great they're really bright let's see get this going here we go and I'm gonna look for the queen there's still there's still cat brood in there okay these other two colonies down here, I didn't see any cat brood. I found the queen, and the queen will be like 25% smaller when she's not laying. I know by looking at a queen, I don't have to look for eggs. I know whether or not she's laying or not, just by the size of her. And I haven't seen this queen yet, but I do see cat brood. And I'm going to keep going until I find the queen. And I bet you she'll be larger than these queens down here in these colonies. I stopped using formic pro formic acid and a good thing I did because every time I use it I lose 10% of my queens and every colony that I've checked now that I use acetic acid I have a queen in every colony. It may take me longer to get the varroa mites out but I'm not killing my queens in a process. You beekeepers that are using harsh chemicals to kill varroa mites you're also killing your bees. So in other words when I say I lose 10% of my queens I've also lost 10% of my my workers in my colonies too, which is never a good thing going into winter. Some of my colonies got small going into winter. I don't know if it's from the pesticides, herbicides, and, and fungicides in the pollen, but I have to work really hard like I do every winter to make sure they have enough bees. I'll be adding bees to this colony all winter just to make sure they have enough to get restarted. Okay, where's that queen at? And if I don't find a queen in here, I will take my smallest colony and I will add or combine, I will add these the other bees. Whichever is the smallest goes in the largest. See, I'm taking that sugar out of the way. I don't want to knock any bees off the cluster. That really disturbs them. If you knock bees off the cluster. The queen is usually in the center of the cluster. Okay, we know that's a very small cluster. Queen's got to be in there somewhere.
Hmm. Well, maybe she died. So if she died, that's all right. I've got it. I'll just take this colony here, locate the queen. And if a colony hasn't had a queen in a while, they will accept another queen and another colony. You don't take that queen out and put it in this colony. You take, and you combine the two colonies. I will take these frames. They got brood on them. I will put them on the other sides of the center frames here, just to make sure you don't want to put them too far away from the cluster. But you put the, the colony that doesn't have a queen on the outside of the colony that has a queen. Okay, thank you.